I'm Lenny. Welcome to the continuing adventures of Lenny Wanser. In this video, we are going to discuss the film The Batman, which was released on March 4th, 2022. It's rated PG-13 and has the runtime of two hours and 56 minutes. I'm gonna be talking about things that pertain to the plot, to the story. If you have not yet seen The Batman and you do not want it ruined for you at this time, you're not gonna to wanna to watch this video until after you have seen the movie. So what is the plot, what is the story pertaining to in The Batman? And we have a serial killer named the Riddler who's targeting certain people in positions, positions of power to expose the corruptions and lies within Gotham City. With each murder, there is a riddle or a puzzle left behind for Batman, who is also working alongside on this case with Lieutenant James Gordon, to figure out and to solve. Now, if they can solve the riddle or the puzzle in time, it will point them in the direction of the next potential victim. And if they can't solve it in time, well, that person's dead and they're gonna have to try to do better on the next one. Batman also teams up with Selina Kyle, someone who's actually working inside the Notorious Iceberg Lounge, and their goal is to collect intel on Oz Koppelpot and the sleazeball criminals that inhabit the club. With each new murder and the revelations that come with it, Bruce begins to question the integrity of his father, Thomas Wayne, and his connections to Carmine Falcone. The movie focuses on a very young Batman. I would say this is probably like his second year being within the suit and being known as Batman or Vengeance. I've heard people say that this is the most Batman in a Batman film that they have seen yet. And I have to agree with that. I agree with that actually wholeheartedly. And that's not a negative thing. That's a good thing. We see more of Batman, more of the vigilante than we do Bruce Wayne. To me, and this is just my opinion, in the film, I get the feeling that the character of Bruce Wayne prefers to be Batman, to be vengeance, to be in the suit because when he's wearing the suit, when he's out doing his things, he is not concentrating or thinking about the internal pain and all that comes along with it of being Bruce Wayne. There were some things that I did not enjoy or like about the Batman, so I'm gonna give my list of the bad. The movie's runtime of two hours and 56 minutes, I don't have an issue with that, I don't have a problem. My issue is though, that there were at least two to three times that the film could have come to a natural conclusion, a natural end on its own, but it just keeps going and going and going to the point where you feel like you're beating a dead horse. Where the hell did that saying come from, by the way? Once the Riddler is unmasked, he becomes boring and dull and borderline pathetic to me. And he was a much more interesting character, much more mysterious, much more foreboding when he's altering his voice and wearing the very strange bondage type mask. Probably one of my biggest issues with the film, and it's nothing major, it's not a deal breaker, is in my opinion, the cameo of the Joker at Arkham Asylum. I felt that it is completely unnecessary. I wasn't feeling it, I wasn't vibing that. There's such an interesting rogue gallery for Batman films that to dip our toes in the water, or the Joker already within this first film, I found it to be too soon, too soon. Let's move past the bad. Let's focus on the positive. Let's focus on the good. And this is what I found to be good about the Batman. Great performances across the board from Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, John Totoro. Well acted, fantastic cast. Within the film, it was super cool to see the respect and partnership between Batman and James Gordon represented up on the silver screen there and see the beginnings of this friendship, this partnership that will continue well into the future for both characters. The Batman feels similar in tone and style to David Fincher's amazing film, Seven. Director Matt Reeves' version of Gotham City is a massive city filled with desolation and crime everywhere that you look. Constantly raining, dark and bleak, it seems like a city that has very little to offer in terms of hope and happiness. And that works perfectly for the tone of this film. Another point for the good 
It's the use of Nirvana's song, Something in the Way. And I'm gonna follow that up with Michael Giacchino's musical score. In my best Batman grovelly type of voice, it's rating time. Bat signal, bat signal, bat signal. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the best score that the Batman could get, I give it an eight. If you think this video is worthy of a thumbs up, please feel free to do so. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see others just like it, all you have to do is hit the YouTube logo, which is going to be down in the corner, and you'll get a notification anytime I upload a new video to the channel. As always, I wanna say thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the opportunity to discuss these things that I love. Greatly appreciate that. Please be safe, be careful, and I'll talk to you soon.